You're right. absolutely right. There's several kinds of intimacy at work in that piece, and one of them is that between me and, and the reader trying to become somebody on intimate terms with the reader. And a way to think about this, um, I, I guess, would be because I travel so much, um, I'm always thinking about my own homeland scale and the places that I visit and how they compare. Um, if if uh, you would ask me to answer a question like this, I would say that um, if you went out here on the street or out on the street in LA or or a number of places that are derivative in one way or another of Western culture, and ask people what it is that they wanted. Um, and, and people weren't frightened and were honest, they would say that they just want an intimate relationship with somebody. And let me give you kind of the shadow of what that answer might saying this, I got in the habit when I was traveling in the Arctic for a number of years of asking the same questions every place I went just to see what people would say in isolated villages and whether it fit together at all. So I would always ask people, what do you think of us? A visitor like me, you know, a white male person? Um, what do you think of my culture? And you have to remember these are people who are living in those landscapes as subsistence hunters. But they, you know, read Time magazine and television and whatnot. And an answer, the most common answer that I got from people about how to characterize our culture was that we were lonely. They saw us as a people who were almost desperate about filling this place that made them feel lonely as people, even though they're surrounded by people. So that's an illumination about intimacy, and this is how they're connected. In order to have an intimate relationship with anybody, you have to be vulnerable. I would say that in my case, in order for me to understand the landscape that I've never been in, I would, I would have to become vulnerable to that place. But in order for me to do that, I would, I'd have to put myself at risk, I'd have to trust that I wouldn't be hurt. So there's a connection between these three things. The desire for intimacy can't be achieved without vulnerability. And you can't be vulnerable unless you trust. Everybody in this room knows a situation that is their own private landscape in which they wanted intimacy, they became vulnerable and trusted, and it didn't work out. That's just how we treat each other. It's built into us for some reason. But I mark that all the time when I travel. That you want a kind of intimacy with other people and an intimacy with place so you can learn. Learn about something different from yourself and learn about somebody else. So when I was thinking about this essay in Intimate Geography, what I was asking for, I guess, was that people trust that a certain kind of information comes when you're intimate with a place or with a person. And there's no other way to get that information except by becoming vulnerable to the situation or the person or the place. So that's a little philosophy, I guess, to start us off with a little light, <laughs> a little light philosophy. Somebody out there want to start us?